Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this week, we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And I'm so glad that, that you're here and that you're able to join in with us as we pray together the Catholic Mass. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. spirit. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have Lord. mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have Lord. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord upholds my life. The Lord, the Lord upholds my life. O oh God, by your name save me, and by your might defend my cause. O oh God, hear my prayer, hearken to the words of my mouth. So the Lord, Lord upholds, upholds my life. For the haughty have risen up against me, the ruthless seeks my life. They set not God before their eyes. The Lord, the Lord upholds, upholds my, my life. life. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord sustains my life. Freely will I offer you sacrifice. I praise your name, O Lord, for its goodness. The Lord upholds my life. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, 
there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insecurity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do conflicts among you come from? It is not from your passions that make war within your members. You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee. But he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all, and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, these past couple of weeks, we've been fortunate enough in my parish to open our schools. And um, so far, so good. Even with the pandemic and the restrictions and the masks and all of that, we've been doing okay and our, our schools have opened. And we're also lucky enough in our parish that we have three seminarians that come on Thursdays to spend the day, uh, you know, learning how to be a priest and, 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 uh, and, and experiencing ministry. So this past Thursday, I was taking the seminarians around and introducing them to every classroom. And um, we got to the kindergarten. And um, as you know, in the kindergarten, um, you never know the next thing that's gonna come out of somebody's mouth. But the nice thing about the kindergarten is when I got to the point after I introduced our three seminarians and said, does anyone have any questions? The kindergarten always has questions. But were you ever asked a question and you really didn't want to answer the question and certainly not in a classroom? The first hand that went up asked me one of those questions. And it was a little boy and he said, Father, can you guess what came out of the potty yesterday in the boys' bathroom? I did not want to answer that question because I did not want to guess what came out of the potty yesterday in the boys' room. 
But one of the things about the kindergarten, too, is they're not only not afraid to ask you any question, but whether you want to know the answer or not, they're going to tell you. So whether you want to know or not, I'm going to tell you what came out of the potty the other day in the boys' bathroom. They said it was a lizard. And I said, a lizard? Now, we do not have many lizards in the neighborhood here. And uh, the kindergarten teacher, it was a good time for her to take her, put her mask down. And she said, I think it was a praying mantis. So I asked the maintenance guy later on, I said, so what's up with the lizard in the boys' bathroom? Guess what? It was a lizard. It was. It's been the last couple of years. We've had these little tiny things. They look like little salamanders, he said. He doesn't know what they are, but they've been showing up. So, in fact, we did have a lizard in the boys' bathroom. But I think about this gospel, and this gospel is all about questions that we don't want to answer, answers that we don't want to hear, and also questions that we were afraid to ask. You know, Jesus does ask good questions all throughout the Gospels. And today he asked the question that none of the apostles wanted to answer. What were you talking about on the way? Now, they were arguing about which one of them was the greatest. Talk about a stupid conversation, right? I mean, the, the 12 of them are walking along with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And they're having a question about who's the greatest in this group. It's Jesus. It's always going to be Jesus when the question is, who's the greatest? But they had this idea, well, maybe it's me. It's not us. It's never us. And Jesus gave them an answer that they didn't really want to hear. The greatest, the one who is the greatest, is the one who can be the servant of all. And Jesus Christ is the greatest, not only because he was the Son of God, but because he fits his own definition. Jesus became the servant of all. He became the suffering servant and the one who would, who would serve us all to such a degree that he gave his life for us on the cross. That is what it means to be the greatest. Well, the apostles might not have wanted to hear that at the time, but eventually they did get it because each one of the apostles outside of Judas and outside of, by tradition, St. John, each one of them themselves learned how to give their lives in the service of others. Each one of them was a martyr. But it took some time. And I think it took them a long time to come to that because of what it says a little earlier in the, in the gospel. Jesus said straight out, I am going to be handed over to death, I will be killed, and three days later I will rise from the dead. It said they didn't understand, and of course they wouldn't. We wouldn't have understood either at that point. But here's the problem. It said they were afraid to ask him a question. You know, sometimes when we are looking at our own lives and we look at what is being asked of us by Christ, sometimes we're afraid to ask the question too. But if we have the courage to ask Jesus the question, Lord, what is my share of the cross today? Lord, what is my opportunity today to be of service to those around me. Lord, what is the way in which I can follow you as the servant of all, even if it means that I be the suffering servant? How can I do it? If we're not afraid to ask that question, then what's going to happen is that we'll be able to see in our own lives some of the things that right now we, we, we look at as things that, that bear down upon us, that, that oppress us, even that can make us bitter, instead of seeing them as the cross and as the means of our salvation. But if we're not afraid to ask Jesus the question, 
What is it for me today, Lord? Along with the answer comes his promise, the promise of his grace, the promise of his help, the promise of his presence with us. We never carry our crosses alone. We're never the servant of everyone else without being able to look and see Jesus right next to us. So I hope and I pray that if we're asked the question that we don't want to answer, if we're given an answer that we don't want to hear in life, that we ourselves won't be afraid to ask the Lord that question, how, Lord, can I best serve you? And then with courage and with confidence, follow him in service. Well, that was smooth, huh? And now let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, as a community of peace and compassion, let us offer our prayers to our merciful and loving Father. We pray that our church may seek in all things to become a community of reconciliation and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all Catholic religions, religious education teachers and all those who work to try to pass the faith to the next generation, that they may guide and inspire others in the wonders and wisdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have dedicated themselves to the service of the poor and the oppressed, that they may never become discouraged or give up hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will raise up to new life those who have died in the peace of Christ, and especially those who are close to all of us who are praying together, that they may receive new life in the peace and, 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 and tranquility of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray that God will hear all the prayers that we now offer in the silence of our hearts. And uh, I usually check the comments after Mass every, uh, every week, and I add all of your intentions to my own, to my own prayers. So now let us, let us present them to our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Gracious Father, hear our prayers. Enliven us with the Spirit of Christ the servant, that we may serve and honor you by serving and honoring one another. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, receive with, the, with favor, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, 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 peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Well, this is the time during Mass when... Um, Catholics are able to receive Jesus sacramentally in the Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And uh, this is always the hardest time for those who, who aren't able to come to Mass, to come to church, and to receive communion. Uh, but what the church tells us that, that we can do is, uh, because it's of no fault of our own that we're unable to, to be a church, that if we can pray now and unite our desire for Jesus, the desire that we have for him to be part of our lives and to come to us in our, in our hearts and in our souls. If we pray now with that desire, we believe that our, our desire, our hope, is united to the desire of Jesus himself, who wants nothing more than to be part of our lives. And we believe that in a special way, 
because God is, is, is not bound by, by any limitations at all, that Jesus himself does become present to us in what we call spiritual communion. So let's make that prayer of spiritual communion now. And let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining with us and praying with us this week, and um, we'll see you again next week.